They won't fear it. Until they understand it. And they won't understand it. Until they've used it. So there are PCs and there are PCs. It's got a 64 core, 128 thread CPU. It's got not one, not two, but three RTX 4090s, only 256 gigabytes of RAM, seven PCIe M.2 Gen 4 SSDs, and it can easily pull more than 1500 watts from the socket. Now, believe it or not, it all has a reason and it makes much more sense than you think. This is one of the most powerful, I see power, most expensive and most jankiest PCs I've ever built on this channel. Now, you might be thinking, who on earth is this PC for? Well, if you work in 3D and you need to render whether on GPU or CPU, this is an absolutely killer setup. What you'll see next is the build process of this PC because it's a lot different than your usual PC. And if you pay close attention, I'm gonna show you some of the upgrades, how this PC can suddenly cost easily more than $50,000. Enemax has been around for 33 years and most of you probably know them by their power supplies but a few years back they also introduced all-in-one liquid cooling products to their lineup. Back in 2017 they released an AIO that covers the whole IHS of a Threadripper CPU. The first gen and TR4 AIOs had an issue in 2019 but since then they have released an updated Lictec Gen 2 and increased the warranty from two years to five years. They also have a no questions asked worldwide return policy. More about the Lictec AIO later on in this video but learn more about NMAX PSU and other products down in the description below. So you've got an actual advantage of knowing what this PC will look like. I actually don't know fully, so it's gonna be interesting. But we've got a lot of very high-end exciting hardware as you've already probably heard, so let's start. The motherboard we're gonna be using is the Pro WRX80 Sage SE Wi-Fi motherboard. In terms of motherboard upgrades, there really isn't much out there. There is the 2.0 version of the same motherboard, WRX80 Sage from ASUS, and that one will give you extra little features, for example, PBO or power limit modification on the CPU, which means that you can push the CPU maybe more than what it is on this one so perhaps that is the upgrade there but it's priced very similarly to the version one of the motherboard this is for the threadripper pro 5000 series and 3000 series pull this plastic cover out take this 64 core threadripper pro 5995 wx cpu this is the best cpu you can get right now for multi-core performance now i know that you can get the xeon 3495x as well but that will have to be overclocked in order to actually beat this amd one here in multi-core performance in multi-core performance at stock settings this is the best cpu upgrades there really isn't anything out there this is is the best as top end as you can get one especially when it comes to performance per watt cpu absolutely ridiculous highly recommend check out my review for the cpu but it's got 128 pca lanes and that's why we have a socket like that as well all we do is slide this down put the clamp down there as well in order to close this number one first and then I'll do a bit of two and a bit of three. Did you know that you need this special AMD Threadripper kind of a screwdriver to uh, tighten this down because it's got a certain tightness torques already built into the handle. I'll show you in a moment, you're gonna hear a click. There we go. Click, click. As long as all of the screws click, you've got a perfect tightness of these and you don't need to worry about anything else. This is 256 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megatransfers per second, team group T-Create 
RAM. Okay, let's uh, get it installed. 128 gigabytes. 256 gigabytes. Now the good thing is DDR4 isn't that expensive anymore and you can get these very very affordable even if you want to put it in your mainstream PC or upgrade RAM in your existing DDR4 system. I highly recommend checking out this RAM kit. Now RAM upgrade and here you can get quite a bit of upgrades. Now perhaps you can change the frequency to a little bit faster but then we might have some issues with the actual integrated memory controller and so on because it's rated 3200 megahertz so if you look at the same megahertz ram you can upgrade to this ram and that's going to cost you <clears throat> nineteen thousand dollars for two terabytes no problem you think that's expensive well have a look at what apple charges for 1.5 terabytes of ram and it's a much much slower ram as well considering that the 19 grand doesn't sound so bad anymore does it and we have another bunch of ssds here this is the Team Group T-Force, whoa, Z440. And the point for these SSDs is that they are Gen 4 NVMe drives, but there are something very, very special about them. Now, as a creator, I'm not sure if you know what a terabyte written spec is that, but every SSD has a lifetime value. The amount of times you can rewrite the SSD cells in there is a limited time. And usually the mainstream SSDs go roughly around 600 terabytes written spec. That's like the Samsung 980 Pro, for example. But these SSDs here are rated 1,800 terabytes written for a one terabyte drive. Two terabyte drive, these come in two terabytes in sizes as well. That is 3,600 terabytes written, which means that you can rewrite pretty much 100% of the drive every single day for the next five years. And that's gonna be the lifespan of this SSD. If you're gonna write less than obviously more than that, but within warranty period, to write one terabyte of files on the SSD and delete them every single day for the next five years. I just can't tell you how ridiculous this is. But you think, oh, surely this is going to come with a higher price point. Well, actually, have a look at the price point for these Z440 drives. It's absolutely amazing. And you might be saying, look, there's only three M.2 slots on the motherboard here. One, two, three. Why are you going to put all these SSDs? Well, this motherboard actually comes with expansion card. Here it is. And this expansion card takes extra four M.2 slots, which, go, which we can slot into any of these slots in here. So we're gonna fill all of these as much as we can. In terms of speed of these SSDs, they are Gen 4 drives and they go up to 5,000 megabytes per second read and write speed. So not the fastest Gen 4 drives, but I think the terabyte written spec over rules or overplays the spec of the speed which uh, i think are quite fast here as well one is already installed let's slot another one in there another one in there now when you are installing ssds on this motherboard there are actually two separate sizes of standoffs in the motherboard case so as you can see in here one of them is pretty much double the thickness compared to the other one. The big size uh, standoffs go for the motherboard standoffs, but the skinnier standoffs go for these M.2 expansion card standoffs. Once we have the standoffs on the expansion cards, the 2280, because that's the length of these SSDs, we're gonna pop these SSDs in there. One, two, three. Down. As you can see, they've slightly redesigned the heatsink design. This is a little bit of an older Z440, and these are the newer ones. Slightly different. Remember to peel off the film on the heatsinks, because otherwise they don't work. So this card now has four terabytes of NVMe storage. Now you can put up to four 
terabyte sticks in there which would mean that you can get 16 terabytes per one slot on this card and if you need a lot of fast nvme storage then this platform is what you want it for because this cpu has 128 pcie lanes and each one of those slots supports pcie by purification which means that you can slot that x16 slot to four x4 slots which this will do and then you can see individual of these m.2 nvmes lined up there so if you have seven of these you can run all of them in their x4 slots and you can get seven times four 28 plus three 31 m.2 slots on this motherboard just so you know ssd upgrades and what we can go for is the sabrent rocket plus eight terabyte nvme ssd so that's a gen 4 drive and it's eight terabytes per stick which means that we can get eight times seven which is 56 terabyte storage in there now if you want to use the whole system as storage you can get more of those expansion cards and slot them into every single one of the slots and then have absolutely ridiculous amount of nvme but let's just be reasonable for now and then just go for these uh, saber and rocket drives and then that's going to cost us extra you know it's seven and a half grand a little bit more i'm going to leave the cooler for a moment because i'm going to have to try a little bit of different things uh, on the case here because uh, this case needs a bit of planning so the case here i have this is the fantex enthu pro 2 and this is a large pc case and i'm going to take some of the panels off in here before i bring it up there there's a lot of things going on here first of all it's got on the bottom fan support uh, 320 millimeter fans can be plugged in on the bottom here maybe even 140 in this slot here but these two are 120 you can put fans in the back there as well and in the front and it supports 140 millimeter fans in the front here as well on the top 140 millimeter fans 140 millimeter fans but then on the side here 120 millimeter fans but it also supports a dual system so you can have two systems inside this system and what i mean by that is if you have a micro atx board you can mount it in this slot over here and then have a dual psu you can put it in here or dual psu slot can be in here as well yes get these covers off now obviously on top of these covers you've got another 2.5 inch ssd mounting here so you could put one two three four 2.5 inch uh, drives in there if you wanted to okay we're going to take the front off the front has a mesh panel and then you've got a little latch on the top there for your front panel IO. There's also a dust filter in the front here. The first things I like to do is play around a little bit with our GPU support because we've got three RTX 1490s. Two of them are Asus 2490, which has about 3.5 slot thickness. And because of the thickness of the cards, we can't fit any everything in there. And we might have to utilize some other parts of the PC to actually mount the GPU. So we're going to have to play around a little bit. First of all, this back cover. So the primary PSU goes in this slot here. But then the secondary slot is in here. So if you take this cover off with these two screws, you have a secondary uh, PSU slot, which we can just put the second PSU here, as you can see. So if you're running like a lot of maybe RTX a6000 cars um, in there boom 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 there are two slots thick but require quite a lot of power and you run out of power with from one supply power supply you can have a secondary in there but this back bracket does come off or the case actually comes with a secondary bracket which is this one here so what we can do is when we slot this one in there just like that it gives us the option of mounting a GPU or something else in here. So we've got some extra PCIe slots there. So I'm not sure if we're gonna fit the tough card here. That's exactly what I'm gonna try now to see if that fits in there. So let's see. So the tough card doesn't fit in here because the three slots thick thickness that we have in the back here there is a little bit of a like a chassis support bracket in here which you can see 
in here as well we've got the same little like a corner bracket there and that's gonna fit or like go in front of it but I'm just wondering if we did let's say go past it it will go really in front of the PC case and it might struggle with the airflow and the same thing is here on the upper part because the card is actually quite deep as you can see it comes out so far we can't use these top slots here even though it might fit in there the card is just too thick the 1490 cooler now the ideal thing would be if there was literally a bracket that we could put on the back here that just moves this even just one slot that way that would do it for us so for example if I cut this bit out from this bracket here I know that would not make this bracket very strong but in theory then we could slot the GPU in there just like that and it would fit but we'd also have to cut the bottom bit out so that's not ideal the other option is if we modified the bracket a little bit and move the bracket along just a tiny little bit or if Fantex could make their own bracket here since I'm not sure about the bracket yet I'm gonna pause this one here and install all the rest as much as we can and then see if we can come back to this in terms of PC case upgrade there isn't much out there and the issue what I have is we need a huge tower that also enables some space underneath the bottom slot of the last PCIe expansion slot because if you want to slot a 4090 for example there it's going to go four slots down we're going to have to have something that supports that and there is something from Fantex it's called the Enthu Elite and that's going to cost you around thousand dollars it is a massive case but it comes with some of the you know elite features let's say so if you do want to occupy that and have more space than what we have over here and perhaps not have GPUs laid you know sideways in there on the bottom then you can go with that case so let's figure out the standoffs because this is an EATX size motherboard that I have and a very long one we're gonna lose these rubber grommets and we're gonna have to use these upper kind of cavities there to make the cables come down from there or perhaps some here but I'd like to install fans in there so that's why I'm not gonna do that but we'll see about the motherboard first on the side here and I'm just gonna check okay this here is gonna come off and it's gonna go there okay I think the standoffs now are in the right place let's see if our motherboard will go in there yep that's it we're gonna go backwards a little bit right now and then install the cooler i've got the noctua nhu 14 str4 and sp3 cooler here and um, i've actually accidentally uh, dropped it and then i bent these corners here as you can see but there's good news there's very very good news about these corners you're not going to see that because i was going to have these covers anyway hc5 cover and then hc6 cover one of them is completely white and then one of them completely black i'll show you them in a moment once we've got the cooler installed because i've already done the like testing on this cooler already i've got some thermal paste on the cpu and cooler so we'll just give it a quick clean Mm -hmm. <laughs> as you can see one of these things why these cooler or this cooler is very very different from the Threadripper cooler is that this cooling bit that attaches to the CPU is very very big can you see how this is bigger yeah yeah, yeah which makes a very good contact with the CPU okay take the thermal paste from the box and then applying the thermal paste paste in here goes like this you're gonna want to put nine small dots and then a little bit bigger dots in the middle of these there 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 and there now if you wanted to you could use a spreader to spread it out but honestly it's not a big problem in here now let's see if we have these lined up 
the right way. Slowing it down into the holes. I'm gonna press down and do a little wiggle wiggle. And then now in a style pattern, tightening this down. And I'm gonna put the fans in here as well. And these are actually replacement Chromax black fans for the cooler because the cooler comes with, you know, these brown ones. But I think I've got some interesting black and white design going on over here. Interestingly, I'm not sure if you've already noticed that the socket is rotated compared to the usual motherboards because usually, you know, you'll have the socket that way, you've got RAM this side and that side, but this means that the air is going to have to come from the bottom here and then pushed out from the top because that will be the natural airflow, you know, cold air and then hot out from there. Which means that we're going to have to um, install those fans kind of backwards. So this way. Okay. The other one just around here. And I've also replaced the rubber corners of the fans with white ones. You can have black ones or anything, but I'm going to have it white ones just because I think this will fit on the design a bit better. And the RAM with this silver and kind of white is working very, very well. Now you could have just one fan for this as well, but two is better because the cooling performance and we want as much cooling power for this 280 watt TDP CPU as possible. And you'll see this cooler will be completely fine. Why didn't you go with an AIO? Why didn't you go with custom loop for this? Because I don't have to. Which one are we going to go for? This white one? Or, or this? I'm liking the white one more, so, oops. In terms of PC cooler upgrades, now LeakTech 2 TR4 was originally created for Threadripper CPUs, but NMX also challenged themselves to make it work with Xeon. Now NMX is pleased to announce that it works both with Threadripper TR4 and Xeon LGA4677 CPUs. Equipped with a user-friendly mounting kit, the LeakTech 2 TR4 Xeon allows seamless installation on both AMD Threadripper and Intel Xeon platforms, ensuring a hassle-free experience. The LeakTech 2 TR4 Xeon AIO cooler is specifically engineered for Intel Sapphire Rapids-based Xeon processors with LGA4677 socket as well as AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro processors with SWRX8, STRX4, TR4 sockets and AMD socket SP3 for AMD EPIC processors. This high performance AIO cooler delivers overclocking grade cooling performance to maintain optimal CPU temperatures, unlocking the full potential of your processor. In addition, it's also recently been certified by Intel and published in their website. Check out the LickTech 2 TR4 by NMX down in the description below. take these PCIe uh, slot covers all off for now just because we're gonna have to try to move the GPUs all over the place and um, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of slotting here and there Ugh. it's definitely getting heavier now Okay, so I have fiddled around a little bit of uh, the graphics card. In terms of the graphics card layout, number one, the MSI Supreme X Liquid will have to go in the very, very bottom slot of the motherboard just because that hangs down just two slots and that will cover the like bottom bit of the motherboard. And I couldn't put any of the GP other GPUs there and if I put something else in there, it would cover or like too many slots so I can't fit everything in there. Then the other one is the PCIe riser cable situation. Now I've asked Fantex already uh, what's the situation with the back panel there and 
it would be nice to actually have the GPU laid out like front so that you've got fan fans in the front here but at the same time I don't mind if the GPU will be kind of even slot just in on top of the fans just like that in there and the other bit is if you put put it kind of diagonally here if we're just going to slot it just down there diagonally like that and you put the GPU in there it kind of will stay there on its own just like that diagonally it will get some fresh air from the bottom there it is doable as well now this is not perfect and i would love to slot it in in the bottom slot there but i think we're gonna have to do see top gpu we could move it slightly down one slot in there and then we'll have the gpu slightly lower down and then we would have the expansion card on the top slot there if you wanted to maybe perhaps that's better to not put as much hot air onto the cpu cooler so that would kind of block block it there out so if that would be the top top one there with a the gray slot or we would put the gray slot that one slot card just over there like that as well in terms of the aio i would put it just over there like that and the good thing is if i had another one of those aios or another one of those cards we could put another one of those pretty much just down there slot down there or on the bottom or on the front so if you are going to build something like this for this system i recommend getting a few of these supreme x's rather than the air cooled cards just because it would just make more sense it takes less room a gpu upgrades yes there are a few out there number one I would go and get the Liquid X from MSI and have all of these as Liquid X because you can slot much more of them out there, even for 4090s if you wanted to. And that would cost you about 5.8, 5.9 grand. The other option is to go with A6000 ADA cards from Nvidia, which are just meant for professional use, 3D rendering, and it's got a lot of VRAM. But that one is gonna cost you right now about 10 grand a piece, is what I can see from a B&H. Now, because it's a very skinny card, you can have four of them, for example, and have the, you know, GPU upgrade cost you just four cents shy of $40,000. Damn! And for the fans, we will be using the Fantex D30 fans, the 120 millimeter fans. And these will use where the 120 millimeter ones go. And for the 140 millimeter ones, we're going to be using the Fantex M25 140 millimeter fans. And all of the fans are white, which means that we're going to get a nice black and white kind of theme going on here. So let me uninstall the GPUs and then put some fan cables in and then see how does that look. Now since this bit over here is getting covered and kind of tight, I'm gonna have to put some of these power cables in there as well, because otherwise the fans will will cover these. So I'm gonna have to double check that, you know, everything fits and the co power cables go through there for the eight pins. Otherwise later on, I don't have any space there. The same for the bottom of the motherboard here. I'm gonna put a few of these cables in. Um, what I can see here, like the front panel audio and the power cables here just because i'm gonna have to start installing the the 240 millimeter radiator here so cables and fans kind of have to be installed at the same time ah uh, okay here's um, another one of those situations where uh, i wish we would have done something a bit before so on this motherboard down here there is two six pin pca slots and here's the cable for it and it's 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 just not gonna quite slot in there so which means that i'm gonna have to open the motherboard a little bit let's see maybe if i leave the top screws in and the bottom one maybe if the bottom comes out i might be able to slot two of these in if you install this first install these power plugs first and some of if you have any other plugs that like are downwards here you might want to install them first uh, because uh, this is not exactly uh, working. Woo! 
Whew. Okay, so this was a bit of figuring out to do here. Um, because everything for the CPU, motherboard, the front panel type A and type C cables have to come from there. And in order to actually still see the Q uh, LED like there, you're gonna have to like figure kind of one way or the other way, kind of how the cables come. But I figured out that I'll put all the cables like one way and then one of these CPU cables on the top here, as you can see there, is going the other way, which pulls all the cables the other way making this nice and like kind of clean aesthetic and the airflow can still come this way and I might be able to still fit uh, a 240 millimeter fan on the top here as an exhaust. Now I have set the AIO fans here to exhaust from the back and I'm gonna go double layer as well. There's two in the back that are exhausting it out because I know the way this AIO has been configured is that it wants to run it quite hot until the fans start, in, uh, like start to kick in, meaning that the radiator will be quite warm. I don't want any hot air to be blown in all the time, whatever this, because that will heat the whole system up. So I want this to exhaust out. Doesn't matter that the air that comes in through the radiator will be a little bit um, like warmer than coming in from the outside, but it's still gonna cool the radiator down. Okay, just a little update of the fans. As you can see, I've got uh, two mix of fans going here because these Fantex D30 fans are reversible as well. So you can see you can get this beautiful thing on the bottom there to uh, not, so you don't see the back of the fan with these like little X and brackets in there. It's gonna pull the fan in like this. So they have reversed the fan blade in there. So the point over here is that I'm gonna pull the air in from the bottom and then from the bottom there and then this here. So that hopefully will push the air out and then kind of diagonally out from the top over there. I'm also gonna put the two in here. So two of these fans will go there as well, just to push the air constantly out from this. There's a bit of a, like a Lego playing here. Which one do, should you put in there first to slot in there? But uh, it looks good. Also, I think I have figured out a good way of mounting the GPU here as well. If I put the GPU literally that the fans are in this way and it will slot slightly down, down here and it will rest on this fan. The fans can still bend, spin, no problem there, but it will rest here and then I'll figure out some kind of resting uh, in the back there as well so that the GPU can actually stand here, maybe slightly diagonally like that in there because then it will get still some air from the bottom or like from here. If you were straight down, it will be too close to the glass here, which would mean that it will kind of joke it, but right now it looks good. So we're gonna keep going. Also these fans kind of slot together so you can get like one big row of fans so you kind of stick them together to each other first which means that now I can only uh, mount this fan here for example with just two screws the diagonals and then put screw covers on and you don't even know that I don't have any screws in there trying to get paid you know it's all still part of the game they run in five drills I'm off for the chain and I'm high still looking like scorpion get over here there's some people try and relate ain't close to here think it ain't a sacred place you done miss it Okay, I think I've got all the fans screwed in now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 fans. The fan upgrade here, it's kind of what do you want it to look like? Now, this is very good fan configuration here, but if you're asking me, is this something that we can upgrade, then the Fantex D30 fans can be upgraded to T30 fans, which are much more powerful and better, but you're gonna lose the aesthetics so depends which one is more important for you. But other than that, there isn't really anything else out there that we can upgrade the fans for. Let's look at the other side. Now, one thing there is missing from this, and that's the power supply. And for that, we are using the Seasonic Prime PX1600. So that's a 1600 watt power supply. It's got 80 plus platinum power rating. There is 80 plus titanium as well, but you know, we're gonna cheap out a little bit, go with the platinum one. The main thing is this here. 
the PCIe connectors so that we don't have to use two power supplies for all the GPUs that we're going to be putting in this build. Now, the power supply is going to go right over here, this way. And then we're gonna have to slot all of these connectors into the power supply. As you can see, I've already put them into the motherboard, like the motherboard connectors, PCIe connectors, there's 600 watt, uh, 12 volt power cables. I've got three of these in here, one, two, and then here's the third one. So all of these have to be plugged in, in this, and then the cable management, let's go. <sighs> okay, again, two steps forwards, one step back, because we had to put an extension for the power supply, I mean the motherboard cable for the power supply, because the power supply cable, this one, isn't long enough to go up and down. Every single one of the CPU and PCIe connector is connected up to this one. That's 11 8-pin PCIe or EPS connectors. All absolutely full. For PSU upgrades, we are 99% there. There is one power supply that I can think of that can give you something extra, that is the TX1600 from Seasonic. And the only difference there is that the power efficiency is from 80 plus platinum to 80 plus titanium. But other than that, that's it. To go above 1600 watts on a normal non-server power supply, it's very tricky to find. So unfortunately, 1600 watts is the maximum we can get. Okay, I've got it now built and everything should be plugged in. Everything should be ready to go. And finally, I figured even out this GPU situation. Basically, now we've got three RTX 4090s in here. And I didn't do it exactly the way I thought it's going to be. So that's why I said this is not going to end up like I thought it was going to be. Because basically this GPU, the very bottom one here, I managed to get riser cable underneath there and then bending it down behind it. So even though this card is plugged in underneath, there is a riser cable on the very bottom slot that goes underneath here and it's plugged in the back over here. Basically, I had to screw the riser cable apart because I'll show you here. The riser cable will have the actual cables going in there and I had like that type of kind of a plastic over there and then the riser cable came out, but I undid this plastic. So then I had a much better bending angle of the riser cable, which made that the riser cable is gonna be a bit shorter in terms of this one, so it doesn't hit the GPU that's coming from the next slot basically down. So the riser cable is kind of a slimmer design, and this is that here. So there's a bit of bare cables there, but actually I made sure that the bare cables aren't touching any metal or anything like that. The actual plastic bit touches the GPU a little bit, but the bare cables are just there on its own, and it's actually working fine, which is, uh, well, we'll see if it's actually gonna turn up on, on Windows, but I have good high hopes for that. M2 expansion card goes on the very top. I could have put the GPU a higher slot and then that one on the bottom one, but I didn't want the GPU to be as high here on the, the CPU cooler. I want there to be a bit more room there and move the GPU down and that also gave me a bit more space between these two RTX 4090s here and then the Supreme here actually with this one fan cooling the VRMs and things uh, has a bit more airflow there plus these fans will like push the air through. Okay power cables in moment of truth three two one Would you look at that? All the fans are going very, very fast. These fans work here. These fans there, here. Every single fan works and it's got RGB as well. Let's see if we can get a pulse there. There we go. Okay. We have the Threadripper, 64 cores, 262 gigabytes it's actually 56 we'll leave that one there because the pcie front slot is this top slot is going to be we have to uh, do like x4 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 
So we're gonna go PCIe raid mode, which I think should be X4, X4, X4. Because we're not gonna go X8, X8 mode. We'll have to see. Everything else we can leave at X16 mode. And the good thing is because this motherboard doesn't have any RGB controllers, so you can't control the RGB from the motherboard, but this case has like kind of a RGB control in there so that I can uh, swap through different colors. I think I'm gonna put them white. There we go. See, this is, is this solid color? Yeah, this is not. There we go. I'm gonna leave it just constant solid white. Look at that. Here we go. One, two, three RTX 4090s. We've got ethernet. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven discs here, as you can see. It's not gonna load them up, but if we go disc, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. All of the seven, look at that. Local disc, one, two, three, four, five, six, Cardia Z440s. The memory is 256 gigs. And look at that, that's what we call 128 threads. The interesting thing is that in order to control these fans, we're gonna have to access the um, IPMI or like the management of the board on another computer. Cause right now the fans are going like very, 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 very fast. So I wanna tune them a little bit because this is, you can't really bear this sound. But what we can do is put some of these panels now back on. I had to remind myself how to exactly get to the um, IPMI of this or the board management control. Number one, what you have to do is make sure that the switches on the motherboard are on. There are two switches that you want to flick on. One is IPMI and then one of them BMC, which you'll just find on the manual if you don't know where they are. Once you've done that, you go to your motherboard's BIOS and when you're in the BIOS, you go to all the way to the last tab, which sh shows you server management. Uh, kind of thing and here you can see that the BMC self-test is is passed the ID is 32 you can see all sorts of these things here BMC support is um, enabled if there's some weird settings there you can just set BMC warm reset but when you go to the network network configuration settings press enter there you can see that here on the first bit, I can see there is here this IP address 192.168.51.8. Okay, that's set by the router. So, and make sure that your PC is connected via Ethernet cable from the motherboard in the back of the motherboard, as you can see that cable there, to the router. And I had issues with 2.5 and 5G kind of networking. So, if you're going through that, it might not work. It, Probably not gonna work, it didn't work for me. But on the manual somewhere it says that the, the actual network NIC on the board is supposed to support that. But if you can connect it to a one or 10 gigabit port on your router, so which I did up there. And basically what you can do then is go to another computer, whether it's wireless or network connected, doesn't matter. As you can see right now here, I am connected wireless to the same network as this one is connected. And then what you want to do is you type in exactly the same H, um, IP address, HTTPS semicolon slash slash, and you go 192.168.51.8 was the, um, I think it was that. Let's go back to check. Yes, 0.8, okay? When we go 0.8, we're gonna hit, we're gonna just hit enter. And as you can see, voila, we are in the control of this kind of a motherboard now and all of the hardware of this computer. This ASMB9 IKVM, that's like the little computer that's doing little chip on the motherboard that controls everything. If you wanna get in, you're gonna go admin, admin, sign me in. And then now we can see everything that's happening on this motherboard. Okay, dashboard, I'll have to remind myself how does this work here. Sensors, you can update the firmware here. There's all sorts of these sensors here. As you can see, chassis fans, they are working quite fast. I'll have to figure out where do, did we um, 
control the fans here. Okay, settings here, fan control. There we go. Let's have a look, customized. Okay, here we can do the fan control. Can you see you can do the fan curves here? Unfortunately, you can't quite drag it as easily. When we hit 70 degrees, no, we're not gonna be 100 degrees. We're gonna be temperature, when we hit 80, 88, then we're gonna be 100%, okay? And then let's take this one down there as well a bit. Ah, now we have nice little fan curves there. So basically I've put the baseline a bit lower so that this will work a bit better. But here on the CPU fan now, I wanna see if I can turn this up to 40. This feels um, about right there now. So the fan curves are done. You can do video recording here if you want to uh, save this. There's all sorts of things that you can you can do here. I'm not a pro at this, but basically, if you want to really dig deeper and get proper geeky, you can control the whole PC through this basically. So if you've got access to that IP address from somewhere else, right, through a different network or even on the same network, let's say you've got a ton of these motherboards in the same, network let's say all of your offices everyone's doing this and then you're saying look my pc is a bit loud a bit hot or something you can just control everything doo -doo 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 -doo, from one computer which is um, pretty pretty cool okay so let's test then some of the hardware and see if everything is working now first of all i want to prove people wrong who say that you need uh, liquid cooling for this cpu right everything is in a case right now it's not an open case Fan curves are very, very moderate. It's very, very quiet here. And then we've got Cinebench R23, which is probably one of the worst tests we can have for the CPU. So right now we're idling at 47 degrees, idling power, as you can see, 100 watts, um, 97 watts, something like that, okay? Let's head on for this, and let's have a look at the temperatures now. Okay, as you can see, we're pulling 170, 280 watts now. 280 watts, PC is hardly getting cold now. 286 watts there, okay, we've peaked at 59 degrees. CPU fans are just gently kind of mooing, mowing there. And we're just calmly pulling about 70,000 points in Cinebench. 70,000 points. 61 degrees with an air cooling, okay? Let me just mention this again. This CPU is pulling 280 watts. We've got a single tower air cooler there with two fans that are not even going 100% speed, like at all. It's at 62 degrees and we're pulling 286 watts from the socket. Yes, the air cooling is well, well enough for that. And that's due to the high contact plate with the IHS. Now we could be putting an AIO there, like a normal 360 millimeter, like Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, for example. And, but it won't do a much better job, sometimes even not a good job, just because the cooling area of the AIO will be so much smaller than this air cooler that gets all of the heat out there. Look at that, it was 63 degrees. How long have we been? About one minute and a half, been pulling 286 watts here. It's absolutely ridiculous. Threads, 128. Let's see. Okay, Fermark has stopped because uh, <laughs> it's not used to having 128 threads. Is it max 32 threads? Yeah, I think it can only, look, it can only put 32 threads 100% utilized. The rest of them are just gonna be kind of sitting there, maybe doing a little bit of things, and we're pulling 250 watts there. Now we're 73 degrees, 74 degrees there. By the way, in the room here, there is 26.4 degrees. It's rather warm in this in this room right now. Interestingly, this uh, CPU burner with 32 threads somehow actually makes the CPU warmer than Cinebench. Look at that, even though not all of these threads are used, it is a little bit warmer, 76 right now. So look at that, if we go stop, okay, we've pulled down in temperature there and if i'm gonna put cinebench on back again look at these threads every single thread 100 percent utilized look 128 threads boom used but interestingly it's not using as much wattage or, or well it is using more but it's not as hot okay look we're gonna stop that 
and then put on now this 32 thread burner and look at that instantly 70 72 degrees it must have used different kind of calculation but as you can see we're not even 80 degrees okay i'm just gonna leave this one running here and then see how how good this is all right okay i'm just turning the pc on here and um looking at the power usage for what it's pulling from the wall we're pulling 418 watts from the wall okay i want to test some of the power draw from the system now because um okay we're running cinebench okay that's 518 watts there and then another thing we can do is run octane bench which basically utilizes every single one of these 4090s and renders in 3d so let's click go and then let's see what happens now uh, oh oh 14 1400 watts 1480 dude we might be running out of 1600 watt power that's 1463 watts that is absolutely ridiculous I hope this is not my house setting on fire downstairs because the smoke alarm is going. Okay, just for a laugh, let's put Blender running there as well, as well at the same time. Okay, we're benchmarking Blender while re Octane render. 1422, 1456. Let's have a look at our GPUs. 65 degrees, we're pulling 290 watts. One of them we're pulling 332 watts. One of them 316. I don't know how much more can we get there. I've got another idea. MSI Afterburner. We've got the GPU. Let's just say pull 133% of the TGP if you want. Start the CPU render. Start Octane render. Let's have a look at our GPU wattages now. Okay, can we reach 1500 watts now or not? 1469? Okay, let's start Fermark GPU stress test as well. So one of these is gonna go, come on, give us 1500 watts now. Yes, 1528. Did you see that? 1487, 1517. Woo! And as you can see, even at that point, we are not going very, very hot. Okay, what we're talking about here, GPU one, 65 degrees max, 60 at the moment. The hotspot or memory is 80 or something. Hotspot is 76. As you can see, we are cooling it down quite well. GPU two, we're pulling 400 watts there. Did you see maximum 540 watts we've pulled there? I'm not sure which one of these is which. 319, maximum 330 pulled. And if we're looking at our CPU, that's just 286 watts and look we haven't pa pushed it past 71 degrees while all of the gpus are like pretty much 100 percent utilized as much as you can in a rendering situation yep uh, one of the gpus here is just casually pulling 400 watts cooling this down is not a problem and those fans are still not going 100 percent because when i first started it off and when we didn't have any of the fan curves it was much much louder so you might be wondering why is this pc janky it's because of this rtx 1490 here believe it or not it's actually hold on this angle on the back by zip ties that go through the PC in those rubber grommets there on the other side to hold it in the back there to actually put this angle in there because it's not really meant to fit in there just because the 40 series cards are so, so big. Now the point is this is not actually fully permanent and amazing solution but I want to show you is that it can still work with this type of situation here and if i was you i'd probably upgrade to the supreme x's that are much skinnier and you can have some of these liquid coolers all around here maybe one there one on the top there one on the bottom or one in the front there you could easily fit them much easier down there just all of the three rtx 1490s there and you don't have this type of janky situation going on here let me make sense of all of this to you. Now you might be thinking, who on earth is this PC for? Well, if you work in 3D and you need to render whether on GPU or CPU, this is an absolutely killer setup. Because in 3D, if you're rendering in Arnold, V-Ray, Octane render, for example, you can make use of all of these three RTX 1490s 
and it makes a lot sense. Perhaps much more sense than some of the A6000 series cards. If you're using CPU rendering or perhaps some kind of scientific calculation, some kind of molecules, chemical calculations, oil calculations, or just compiling a lot of code, then the CPU is the best multi-core CPU that you can get for that type of work. There is nothing like that on the market. At that low power consumption, it just beats everything out there. Yes, Intel theoretically can beat that, but at about three times the power consumption. So for CPU and GPU rendering, this is probably the best PC you can get in the world. Now you might be professional 3D creator, you might be saying, why didn't you use the Ada A6000 cards, for example? Well, they're the new Quadro cards that Nvidia kind of canceled, but calls them now A something else. Well, the reason for that is because you're gonna get much more 3D performance out of these three cards and it's gonna cost less for these three cards than one Ada 6000 card. Now, one Ada 6000 uh, card will cost roughly about six, seven thousand pounds, maybe eight thousand dollars, something like that. But in terms of rendering performance, it's gonna perform about equal to one RTX 1490. But we've got three for the price of one A6000. So our Arnold render, for example, or Octane render is gonna be much better with these 4090s. And I understand that there is a limitation of VRAM and how the programs can pile it and it's not exactly SLI and they can't share this all. So if you do need more VRAM for your GPUs, then perhaps going with ADAS is a better option. But just in comparison, this guy here, is about three to four times cheaper than Apple's absolutely maxed out Mac Pro. Okay, I know since we started making this video, Apple has actually released their new Mac Pro lineup, which has the M2 Ultra chip, and is a lot more cheaper than the Intel Xeon, um, you know, lineup from 2019. They don't sell that one anymore, which I just showed you. But at the same time, it's also a lot worse than our PC here in GPU and CPU performance. Plus, you can upgrade your CPU, RAM and GPU and anything you want. In that uh, Mac Pro, you're very limited what you can upgrade. You can basically upgrade just your I.O. Now, I know we're comparing apples and oranges here a little bit, but believe it or not, this orange here is much better as long as you don't need Mac OS. If you need something else and you can use it in both platforms, then this is absolutely killer of a system. In conclusion, I'm quite liking this black and white design and what's going on here. I like that these white fans in a black PC chassis with the white accents, a little bit of gray there, brings a little bit of lightness to the case and the theme kind of is quite nice. Now, I do wish I had three MSI Supreme X or Supreme Liquid X GPUs in there because then it would look a bit cleaner aesthetically and just a little bit faster as well because they're one of the fastest cards out there. If you're wondering what are the PC benchmarks for creators or perhaps about the 4090 scaling, how much performance we're actually gonna get when going from one to two to three RTX 4090s, then stick around, there's more videos coming about this PC. And if you do feel like you wanna spend your mortgage down payment on this PC, then check out the links in the description below and feel free to make a purchase. Thanks guys for watching, I'll see you next time.